First up was the roof of the world, Mount Everest. Standing at 8,884 metres tall, climbing the Black Pyramid had come to represent one of nature's ultimate challenges to man. With over 120 bodies still on the mountain, Everest has claimed roughly 190 lives. With 10 deaths in 2006, the year of Hayes' attempt proved to be more treacherous than most. Every year there's a few deaths. I mean, historically, I think one in every 10 summiters has died. Having served in the Gurkhas for eight years and fluent in Nepalese, Hayes was more than comfortable with his surroundings. An absolutely glorious day. What's breakfast today, Jagged? Um, porridge. Porridge? Yeah. Just for a change. Hemente, mm. <laughs> namaste, Hinta. Namaste. Keho. Tato pani. Tato pani, Jagged and the cook. What have we got today? As you cook, can I keho? Porridge. Porridge. Toast. Cheese toast. Lunch maji onda onza. Anda? No eggs? I <laughs> China lunch ma onza. I China. I China lunch Love the country, love the people, love the scenery, love the food, the Sherpa culture, the culture of Everest, the history, and, and the whole magnificence of the place. Easter Sunday, 16th of uh, April, and we're having the official puja, which is the Buddhist ceremony, which we offer blessings and prayers to the mountains, and the Lama prays all our safe return. And the Sherpas wouldn't, uh, wouldn't dream of climbing on the mountain before performing puja. In fact, it's a compulsory thing, so all the expeditions do one before the setting foot on the mountain. Eleven climbers, including Hayes, made up the Ice 8000 Mount Everest Summit Expedition. The 2006 expedition was split into two groups. Adrian's team was made up of Tim Cahoon, Dr. Rob Cassily, Dr. Mike Brennan and Tim Calder, a fellow officer of Hayes in the 7th Gurkhas. Just weeks earlier, Calder had suffered a fracture in his leg. The wound now heavily infected. The healing process hadn't been kind. How you feel, mate? Well, compared to this morning, much better. Um, my leg was very painful this morning. I mean, I've just been squeezing it. Lots of pus out my leg. Yeah. It's nearly normal size. Much, much better. I have no mo very little movement this morning. And... Now it's a bit better. Feels good now. But Calder's relief was short-lived. 17th of April, uh, pus and shit's coming out of Tim's leg. Ready, Tim? Should we have another push? Do you see that stuff coming out? Hey? Yeah, I can. I'm yeah. closing up on it. So we're going to put some saline in now. Oh, it's all coming out. Look at that stuff there. Look at that. There's been 15 routes done on Everest, but nowadays, basically two routes are the ones where everyone climbs, the Tibet side or the Nepal side. And the Nepal side's got a standard, um, standard route. You, you go through the Kumbu Glacier, which is a cascading waterfall that, that crashes and, and falls. It's quite a long climb, it's quite dangerous. There's been a lot of accidents in the past, there's been some deaths. From there, uh, you go across the Western Kumbu, it takes a few hours to get up to Camp 2, where, again, most of the teams camp there. The majority of the group took the best part of two weeks acclimatising between base camp and Camp 2. For Tim Calder, however, he had just one chance to make it to the camp. I think we all felt a little bit um, concerned for him. He was missing the vital acclimatisation period, because you can't make up that time. Acclimatisation is so vital, and he was missing it all. Oh, now I'm with uh, Timmy Calder, ex Gurkha mate. Tim, last seen, last seen in the video, uh, blood pouring out your leg, and you're up at camp too. Amazing miracles happen. What's how's the leg first of all? Yeah, the leg's no problem at all at the moment. Uh, it's healing up. It's more of a case of uh, just breathing up here and uh, acclimatising. 
Now you lost about how long? How about ten days out with that leg, didn't you? Something like that. Yeah, it was about ten days. Ten days. So is the fast track acclimatisation working well for you? Um, you feel all right, yeah? It's quite hard work, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you t the day after tomorrow when I get to camp three. From Camp 2 on the Western Cum, you ascend the Lotsey Face, which is a fairly steep uh, ascent up to Camp 3, which is located halfway up the Lotsey Face. We only go there once before, that the idea is to go there, spend the night, get your body acclimatised to the highest it's going to be before you try the summit attempt. 3.35 on Tuesday the 23rd, location Camp 3. We're absolutely... <coughs> No, we've got to think positive. We're not, uh, we're not bollocks at all. We're very, very fresh, aren't we? Yeah. There is the Western Coombe where we came down, where we came up, and that was a hard, a hard day. After that, then, you've got again a further ascent of the Lotsey Face up to Camp 4, the South Col, which is located in the death zone. Uh, we only go there when you're actually going to try the, try the mountain itself. Twenty five, going off in about uh, four, mate. Five hours. Hey, Finn, Rob. Yeah, good. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. It's quite tight in here, but uh, I've pushed up as much as I can to let everybody else have as much space as they possibly can. Because I'm, I'm that sort of person, aren't I, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, move your fan ass that way. <laughs> Look, there's three people in less than half the tent. Uh, uh, that's your fault. The day of Hayes' summit attempt, there was little time for jokes. The extreme altitude ensures the amount of oxygen and blood pumping around the body is kept to an absolute minimum. The result for some, altitude sickness. The simple fact is I always get altitude sickness, I always get chronic headaches, and they always kick in around 3,200 meters. And it's something I have to try and overcome. It's, it's a bit of a debilitation because, you know, altitude sickness, when you get it bad, it's like the worst hangover you've ever had in your life. I did everything I could to minimize the effects of acclimatization. You know, I'll take anything I can, any supplements I can. So I slipped to Viagra on my, on my summit night, yeah. The extra blood being pumped around his body did little to help Hayes as he soon realised that the bladder for his gas mask was failing. When it came from the balcony onwards, then the guys sort of just took off, they zoomed away and just, just were steadily pulling away from me. And um, it was only when it got to daybreak, I'd been climbing then from 10.45 to about 5 in the, in the morning, um, and I got to a stage where I just sort of slowed down to, a, not a crawl, but I just slowed down to a, a little bit of a, a nothing. You know, tears started welling up in my eyes. I couldn't believe it that, that three years in planning, a lifelong dream, and, and, and I'd done really well on the whole thing so far, was just going to fail because of a broken mask. In a last ditch effort, Hayes's Sherpa Tindu stopped to inspect the mask. I don't know what happened, but between us we said, well, look, let's look at this mask, and we got an ice axe and just gave it a crash, and then suddenly, it's working! It's working, the bladder's, the bladder's working. Then I noticed I was, I was finally getting some oxygen, just this trickle, one litre, but that was a big difference. As Hayes got his second wind, Rob Cassily and Tim Calder had made it to the summit. Okay, Tim, any words at home? Or... Thanks, 
kids for being so supportive. Really it. It's a great mm -hmm. kind of experience. Okay. Thanks to Rolf for setting my leg out. Hey, no worries. I'm be here. Thanks to the shepherds. Mm -hmm. Cheers. <laughs> And so Cassily and Calder started their descent. As the last South Face summiter of the year trudged towards his goal. And the last few steps. The very, very last few steps. I can hardly breathe. And I'm on top of the world. I'm on top of the world. The whole feeling was just utterly surreal that I can't believe this, the roof of the world. But there was little time for celebration. Something's only halfway there, you've got to get back down again. And, and all emotions went out, all realisation of success went out the window. It was a struggle to get down. And I've been without oxygen 17 hours, minus that two hours I had, and, and you're fighting to get, to get your muscles to work. Your muscles want to move, your arms, your legs, and they just won't. And so you have constant breaks, constant stops, and you're fighting the effects of not having really having slept for three days. You just want to slump down and sleep, but you know you can't. You've got to keep moving. Quite simply, it was the hardest six hours of my whole life. This descent, it was utterly, utterly horrible. It's only when you reach base camp that you suddenly go, oh, I've made it. And you look back up at it and you think, you know, I've done it. Of Hayes' team, only Mike Brennan did not make the full summit. For Hayes, however, it was the first leg of his mission completed.